go back to reading. <laughs> Hello. Let me start. Hi. Uh, I'm Sohel. I'm working for Product Group. And today I want to talk about the Swizzling, one of the forgotten uh, Objective-C features. A lot of people are scared of it, but it's actually a very good thing to know about it. So, one of the examples I want to give is that imagine if, imagine if you own a highway and you also have a signboard <coughs> on the road that says slow down, speed limit is 5 km. And then, and imagine you have a chance to change the road, road sign anytime you want it. So you don't have to go do the construction, hey, I want to change something. <laughs> so this is a simple example uh, of what's exactly Switzerland. Another example is actually, uh, the reason I'm putting the second one is because we didn't uh, come to the point that we can actually agree on what is the meaning of Switzerland. Second one is that, let's say you're in the lift, you select a level, let's say level eight. <clears throat> Instead of going to level eight, I take you to level 11 and I show you a still level eight. Your, assum your assumption is that you're on level 8 without you actually knowing it. That's exactly what is Switzerland. So, in a simple definition, Switzerland is a fact of changing functionality of a method on the wrong time. So, imagine you have a two method, function A and function B with the representative selectors. So, on the wrong time, you, you are able to change the selector's pointer to different methods. Well, it's kind of dangerous. Uh, I agree, but it's a cool thing to, I mean, it's a good thing to know about it before we actually say, oh, it's scary, we're not never going to use it. So, Switzerland is a dirty hack, but in some situation, it's the only situation, I mean, it's the only solution to our problems. I will give an example why. Switzerland works, unfortunately, only on Objective C runtime. What does that mean? Is that if you optimize your code for Swift, you get to put some Objective C or dynamic variable into it. So, basically, Objective C run runtime, everything in the function looks gonna be looks like this: Objective C methods based on the C structs method. So, basically, methods is the selector selector that we use inside Objective-C, and method types are uh, our C string of the encoding parameters for return and passing parameters. And the last one is the method implementation, which is uh, pointing to your function. Objective-C2 on available is actually a marker indicates that the member is not available and only provides some insight into the structure. So that's not really important in this part. So why using Swizzling? Uh, the reason is that none of the Apple's framework written Swift. That's true, it's still none of the Apple's framework written Swift. And many part of the are still running on Objective-C runtime. My proof is this code. This actually you can find online, it's a Ruby code. I actually look for all of the frameworks written by Apple. And by just using the O tool, you can see what are the frameworks that use by uh, written in Swift, which is none. So now is a good time we see can use the Swizzling in our runtime. Who uses Swizzling? Well, all of the most of the good analytics, such as Mixpanel, they use for A/B testing. Push notifications such as one signal and Firebase. If anyone uses the Firebase, that's a good thing to know that they're actually what they're doing behind the scene. And Network API is it used to be a good idea last back in the time used the uh, for unit testing, use Swizzly methods. Well, this part is safe because it's just for unit testing. And so, how to use it? Uh, you need to create a method that will be in, in the new implementation. You can do it on the fly or using a class method that create a new method on the fly. Get the class representation, get the old implementation reference, and then get the new implementation reference at the same time and ask Objective-C runtime to swap them for you. Very easy, right? So, any class method that uh, in uses dynamic method can be suited in Swift. I'm not suggesting to use object parameter because since Swift 2.2, if you use it, this does not guarantee that your function gonna go through the dispatch of uh, Objective-C runtime. 
So it's good to stay safe, use always dynamic if you want to do suiziling. And using subclasses that are subclass of any subject that are guaranteed they're going to use Objective C runtime. So this is the example. Let's say you have a normal class, Swift class. If you want to, this objective, uh, you should use dynamic function. This means that uh, your method is going to be dynamically dispatched at the runtime, or just simply using a subject. Oh, sorry. So how do we do it? It's very simple. We have a function uh, API, which is this is actually the object to see uh, API bridge to Swift, which is you get the class get instance method of your class and your selector name, and you just swap them method exchange. Very simple. So let me give you exact a very simple. You can do it actually in the playground. So let me uh, in this example I'm creating a uh, simple class, uh, favorite color, which I'm going to store my my favorite color and my second favorite color. So it's blue and my second is going to be red. Not pink. No, it's PG. Yeah, probably grew. <laughs> uh, so we turn the red color. Alright, so I, I'm initializing the class and I'm just going to print out the top colors. Yep. <coughs> so let's do the magic. Yeah. Let's do the selectors. I'm not typing because I thought I'm going to make mistakes on the live, so. <laughs> and I didn't want to take your time to. So class get instance method, and uh, if you're outside your class, like uh, this is not extension, so you always have to ma mention which class you're actually selecting. So favorite color does self just to get the class identifier. And this is the suicide methods, or we can say a second method that you want to swap with it. My second call can be that's my second selector. So as I say, we just use the swapping. But it happens sometimes when you try to do that on playground, it causes it to crash because you're actually using the object to see it on time in here. But it, it will work, so don't worry. <laughs> so now if I try to call the, my top colors, it's going to show red is actually is my top color. Wait, I forgot something. Oh, yeah. See, if I put a dynamic, now it's actually the object to see it on time is running. Yep. So my second color now is blue. Right. So this is not a proper way to actually do it. We always do it inside the category classes or extension. <coughs> so uh, in Objective C, we had a, a good thing we used to call load function that you only call once when the class is loaded. But unfortunately, in Swift, you don't have access to the load method, so we have to use initialize. So for that reason, we, we have to make sure that we only call whatever class inside initialize once. So we use a dispatch once to do the safety check that nothing goes wrong. And it's a good practice. Anytime we do the switching, we always call back to the original method that has been called. Because imagine you're not the only one doing the switching. A lot of people uh, doing the switching the same methods, so you're going to be messed up if everyone's trying to do that. Uh, so I have an example. Uh, this is a normal app, which has a tree view controller. You go inside, and let's say you're tasked to create a uh, 
analytics. Every time you go to a view controller, uh, I want to print out what is the name of that controller, right? So the simplest method, you just go make that subclass of view controller, or you create a protocol that calls to that uh, methods, whatever you have in there to represent it. Or the easiest hack is to use it Swissly, which, uh, which is not a good idea, but a lot of analytics actually doing it. So I'm doing ex creating an extension of UI view controller, and I'm making sure that this is not a uh, subclass of the UI view controller, because a lot of things are going to be represented. And I'm selecting the, the uh, view view app here, original view view app here. UIV controller and my CISO method. So, since I'm an extension, I have to create a uh, a method in here that I can call it. So let's call it new view view app here. Uh, made a mistake. And so it should be exact same kind of method that is in. Uh, I'm the same parameter that I accept in here as the original selector. So, and uh, <coughs> creating a method, which is get instance method. So here I can just call self because I'm in the extension class and call in a selector. So this is a SUSO selector and SUSO method. So here we swap in sorry, original method with the suite of method. So this is dangerous actually to run this one. As I said, we need to do the safety check so you will not run the same type of suite every time. So we gotta make sure we run we're using the dispatch once in this class. So we use a token in here. We call the reference of the token. And Yep. So there is a one hiccup. What if in the future Apple start to remove a view will appear? So in order that doesn't happen, we use the class add method. This function would check if I can add this class. So uh, it will return. This is actually class met, uh, class add method return back a boolean. So if I can add this method, a method which means this class doesn't exist, the original method. So uh, I can replace it with a new method which I created over here. If it does exist, which is, is already existing in a UI view controller, then you should do the method exchange get implementation. So class add method and it's a return back. And this is the part, since the class already exists, I say class replace with a new method, which takes the, the new selector and the old implementation, just to make sure everything's already done perfectly. So, I think there's an example inside too. I'm just going to clean up a little bit, so... Good. And as I mentioned, the best practice is that any class we create... <coughs> So in in my new view will appear, I'm actually saying I'm at the suite of method and I'm also printing the name of the class. And this is the original view controller. I give the custom one and all of the view controller is part of this. I'm uh, printing out the statement and say I'm in the class. So you can see what are the results. You can see this is the new navigation controller and other hierarchy as well you can see in here. So you can see that actually uh, your SUSE method get called, and then your your in the your your in original class. So 
uh, this part is, is okay. This is just the object you see since you already know it. So as I said, as I mentioned before, is that the best practice is that you always call to the original meta as well. This is like a recursion. If you call yourself, you're actually calling the original meta. So this could cause you a lot of trouble, but I'm not disable this part because you gotta make sure that this is uh, this is definitely not some class of that view controller you want. I'm just giving an example on UI view controller. You can just go for any type of custom controller that you want to do, or sometimes you are alert that, that you want to do modify modification <coughs> on it. So yes, that's that's pretty much it. The next thing I I believe it's uh, uh, more or less is very relative is associated objects. So associated uh, associated arbitrary values for the key and the runtime, and add custom properties to the existing classes in category or extension. Uh, it define a key variable whose address we use as a key. So you know in a lot of example that. Uh, you know, in the extension of category, we can have a property. We can store in a value. Not true. With the associated object, which is the runtime, you can actually store anything you want. Let's say in a UI alert, uh, you want to pass some custom parameters with an extension. You can do it with the associated object on the runtime. And it doesn't have to be, your class does not have to be any sort of Swift, uh, underlying Swift optimization. It doesn't matter. As long as you use associated object, everything can be run on Objective-C runtime. So let's say I have a custom name, string, and I created a struct method right inside my extension just to store a value. And I'm setting the associated object and with the reference key to that name. And I can get the value from it. Very easy. So this is my example class. So I have a like a sample class, and let's make an extension out of it. So I want to create a name. The moment you do that, you get a compiler that says the extension may not contain store properties, which is a very <laughs> error, but you can skip that part. So I'm adding a setting associated type. This is the reference to, so I have an outside string, if you look at it, I'm just referencing to that one. And this is the object association with it, and non-atomic, it basically is objective C, all those kind of reference that you have over here, so in here as well, so you have access to everything you want. And this is going back to the pointer and making sure that this is returning by as a string. So let's do a quick example. <coughs> I create a name and I print it out. Ta -da. We have custom name in our extension. And final note. So do not sizzle Swift classes in Objective-C files. For some reason, there are some weird behavior may occur because Swift try to optimize your code and you're trying to break it down in Objective-C. So some weird behavior I notice that it happens. Do not suicide everything. If you suicide everything, then <laughs> your app is like, like a whole exception to trying to run your app. Be aware of multiple methods that suicide the same, uh, same method. This, uh, when this happens, it's all about race conditions, so which uh, methods gonna get called first. That's why I'm saying always call back to the original method, so you won't break anything. And that's all. Any question? I just have one question. Yes. Please coming back to report, can you write this for This is the hardest part. 
because this is a wrong time and a lot of shit could happen on the wrong time. So uh, it's kind of hard, but it's possible. I've seen a lot of people actually write tests for these things, but uh, it's hard. Actually, if you look at the mix panel, the unit tests are writing tests for swizzling methods that they've done. But it's not. It's nothing that is not possible. It's possible. The moment you swap the code, you just have to make sure that this code is being swapped. But in a test, you would swizzle at load. Yes. Set up test, right? Yes. <laughs> then, then throw away the object. <laughs> Can okay. be done. Cool. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but it's nothing like you have to be scared every time when people say swizzle. It's like, oh my god! But it's something cool that we all have to learn and. It's a good thing to be kind of use it at once in a lifetime. <laughs> All right, that, that's from me, and I pass it to my friend Raj. Thank you very much. <laughs>